Hello. What do you think about the current climate change crisis? Everyone's thinking about it and talking about it. Everyone's anxious, if not terrified, about it. Now, it's undeniable that wise stewardship of Earth's resources is a must in any event. Wastefulness is criminal. Abuse is, is likewise. But whatever anyone thinks of the science behind climate change, there is a neglected Christian dimension to the crisis. Whatever secularists might say, this Christian perspective demands a hearing. It boils down to this, that according to the Bible, the Word of God, the world as we know it is doomed. So whatever Sir David Attenborough or Greta Thunberg or others might say, neither they nor scientists nor politicians can do anything to save the planet. The biblical teaching about global doom and recreation are fundamental features of authentic Christianity. And this inevitable climax to the world's history provides the most profound vindication of Christianity. There are some people who are saying that young people should not be frightened about the doom-laden rhetoric of many modern scientists. But whether they're right or wrong, it's undeniably the case that the Bible has a message which we must heed and that we neglect at our peril. And that's found in the writings of the New Testament, in particular uh, the letters of the Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul. I believe, in fact, that Second Peter chapter 3 is perhaps right now the most important chapter in the entire New Testament. Let me read to you some of it. The Apostle Peter writes thus, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up, Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens being on fire will be dissolved, and the elements will melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and reckon that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, of which some things are hard to understand, which those who are untaught and unstable twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. There's an interesting reference there by Peter to his brother Apostle Paul who has a lot to say about this subject. He mentions about the groaning of creation and its eventual deliverance in Romans chapter 8, verses 21 and 22. And then, more seriously and alarming, he writes in his second epistle to the Thessalonians these words. He's speaking to encourage Christians who are being persecuted for their faith. 
And he says that it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. Therefore we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ that's quite plain what the teaching of the Bible is this is historic Christianity this is not some new fanatical revelation this is the historic Christian teaching which is largely suppressed if not forgotten or even scorned in some modern Christian circles but backed up by the Apostle Paul uh, Peter is pointing us to Jesus Christ as mankind's only hope there is no hope in secularism in all its manifestations or Islam or any other ideology all these are huge fallacious distractions the only hope is to repent of our sins to have faith in Jesus Christ who died for our sins upon the cross that we might find forgiveness of sin and to live the Christian life in holiness and obedience in love, in righteousness, in charity and kindness this is the only lifeline to the new beginning and deliverance from the damnation of hell and this I suggest to you is the most vital message in the world right now it takes us beyond all the anxieties over climate change and the disputes over the science behind it it brings us to the conclusion of the Apostle Peter when he says quite plainly to all who would heed this urgent message this is what he says you therefore beloved since you know these things beforehand he's talking to Christians of course but others need to hear it that they might become Christians beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness being led away from the er with the error of the wicked but grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ to him be the glory both now and forever Amen so this really is the message the most vital message that the world needs I hope that you will think about this read your Bible and if you listen to all the political and environmental debates about this urgent subject do not dismiss this feature of historic Christianity it's our only hope so I urge you to turn to Jesus Christ whatever you thought about science and religion beforehand flee to Jesus Christ get on your knees and turn from your sins and yield your life to him the only saviour of the world there's no other hope all this that I've shared with you is absolutely inevitable God have mercy upon you and all whom you love and indeed upon this poor world Amen <laughs>